We're just going to show a couple of little drills. You can use these as warm-up drills or shooting drills. Um, in some ways, to highlight a point, hopefully, we'll see how it goes. But such small sample sizes that the numbers might not stack up. You're going to pass the ball, and you're going to just run out and try to contest the shot. All right? If you can block it, block it. All right? This person here is going to catch. They're going to shoot. A few things that can help you with this, and part of this is practice, there's a little rhyme. It goes, if they're not close enough to touch the ball, they're not there at all. All right, so for the shooter, if Malika has good shot preparation, she has an ordinarily quick release. If this person's not going to block her shot, it's no different than a wide open shot in an empty gym. As long as she watches the ball into her hands and then locks onto the target and shoots. All right, obviously, if she takes a sneaky look at the defender, they've started to have an impact. If she rushes her shot, they've started to have an impact. That's why you want to have an ordinarily quick shot that you'll get off without having to rush it. That's your normal speed of shot. You'll go to the back of the line, you'll take over as the shooter, and the next person will go. Let's just go and tell we've each taken, uh, let's say, three shots each. So Malika, you can keep that record. All right. Okay, the, 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 by nature of the shot making, these numbers will probably not work out, but we will see. Passes go to the top. Malika come to underneath. Yu Ching, you don't have a ball. Uh, come and make a down screen. Okay, so now, Malika, you're gonna come off the down screen. You're looking to get a 45 catch and shoot. No, no, 45, three. Once you've passed, sprint it here and close out. All right, get your own rebound, join the back of the line, defense, become the new shooter. You're just there to simulate a screen. Are we happy with this? We're going to go three shots each. Fast, 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 time the pass. Okay, so players, coaches, you can all have a vote on this. Which shot do you think is the easier shot? The first one in the corner or the second one now? Hands up if you think it's the first shot that we took. Hands up if you think it's the second shot that we took is the easier shot. Hands up if you can't be bothered putting your hand up. <laughs> Some can't even be bothered putting their hands up for that. Most people felt that the first shot was the easiest. What do you guys who had to do it think was the easier shot? The first one is easier. Because I think that if you look at those two shots, the first one is more of a modern shot, and the second one is more of a traditional shot. And this shot for a, a lot of times gets perceived as being a better shot than the first shot, but it's harder, so it doesn't make sense. Right, so for example, if we sprint down in transition, you know, obviously in, if you've watched games this year, you'll be familiar with it. And let's say Ethan Rusbatch runs down the wing, he's open, we throw it to him, and with 21 seconds on the shot clock, he takes that shot. Traditionally, that would be perceived as a bad shot. Yet, if we ran a really intricate play, and there was lots of screens, and then at the end of it, someone had to do a big screen here, get whacked by Piero Cameron, then sprint off here, run out here, catch, face up and shoot. Everyone would say, oh, great coaching, lovely offense, great shot. But it's way harder. So we want to consider what constitutes a good shot. And I think the likelihood that you will make it and the expected points value, right? Those two things in combination. So most people understand that that isn't a good shot, really, because you're not going to make it that much better than you make that shot. In fact, the NBA data shows that they shoot this better than that, literally, not even when you take into account the point. But the expected points value is obviously 50% more than it is 
there. So this unquestionably is going to yield more points than that. That stays true until about here. So in the NBA, they don't shoot it more efficiently from, so from here till the three-point line is basically sub-efficiency. So you think it would be like, like a gradual progression, but it's not. It's like really high scoring here, and then it's just a big dead zone. And then they get more. But there's more to it than making it an easy shot. Uh, if you think about force in a straight line, you're trying to eliminate, eliminate rotation, right? So on the first shot, there's basically no rotation. You're facing the hoop, you catch, there's no angular movement unless the pass is really bad. So this is much easier. But on the second shot, you're having to turn through a lot of angular rotation. So you've got momentum going like this that you have to halt and get it to go straight again. And if you get it out by just a tiny bit, by the time that this angle being off diverges to get to the hoop, you know, you've missed by quite a lot. So it's an easier shot because there's no angular rotation. And then if you think momentum wise, well, one of them you're stepping in and all that momentum and power is going towards the hoop. Whereas on the other one, all your momentum and power is going away and you've got to basically generate power back. So the modern shot is perceived as being a bad shot, but it's much easier. And then the traditional shot, bear with me a second, is perceived as being a better shot, but it's much harder. Yu Ching, when do you shoot it better? If you're feeling really confident or not very confident? When you're shooting really confident? Everyone would agree with that. You shoot it better when you're feeling confident. I assume no one disagrees. They're a better shooter when they're not confident. So why? Because the, to me, there has to be a physiological reason why the psychology plays a part. Some of you will have done level 1 PE, level 2 PE, maybe. So has anyone here familiar with the idea of summation of force or force summation? A little bit. Is anyone a PE student here? There's some people who are now looking like they don't want to admit that they are, like, damn, because then I'll have to be... So Nick will be aware of this. So summation of force is one of the big biomechanical principles that plays a part in any projectile motion, well, and not just projectile motion, if you're trying to jump to touch something, any time you're trying to generate force. So it's really important in shooting a basketball. And there's two really key components to summation of force. One is sequence and one is timing. So if I was to shoot a basketball, you know, it starts with Newton's third law, which is for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction so I'm going to push into the ground and the ground's going to do what back to me yeah it's going to push me back isn't it now one of us will move it won't be the planet so I'm going to be the one who moves right so I start getting forced back and it's going to be working through like a kinetic chain that's effectively gastrox, quads, glutes, up through the core, into pectoralis major, anterior deltoid, tricep, into the wrist flexors, and then you're putting force into the ball. And if you get that sequence in the right order, and with the timing, so ideally, if this is force, we want the gastrox, and then the quads, and then the glutes to be kicking off those peak force. If we get the timing and the sequencing right, then we will be better at power generation. Then up top with the shot can be more push-like, like if you're playing darts, which will make it more accurate and you're more likely to hit shots. And if you're playing with a lack of confidence, you generally think and then the timing is likely to be out and possibly the sequencing because you do this one. Am I going to get in trouble for shooting this one? Shit, fuck it By the time you've thought something like that, your sequencing and timing is out, 
what's most likely going to happen to your shot? Make or miss? Miss. Probably short. It's probably going to hit the front of the rim because you're going to have little hitch or something in it. And then by the time, and now you miss, well, that's going to reinforce your doubt. So now the next time you're open, you're or even more like, oh, I missed the last one. Shit. And so as coaches, if you want your players to shoot the ball better, you have to give them certainty. Certainty comes confidence. If you have doubts about what you're supposed to be doing, you will not be confident. But if you are certain, then you can be confident. From confidence, you're going to be aggressive. And your shooting will get better because they'll have better force summation because the timing and the sequencing will be better. And so you have to have a clearly defined shot threshold so everyone understands what shots you're trying to generate. They may be slightly different for different coaches. But a clearly defined shot threshold that you want, that you perceive as being, these are the good shots that we want. And then... It has to be process-oriented, all right? So you have to decide whether it's a good shot based on the decision, not the result. If you do it on the result, it doesn't work. It has to be on the decision. So if someone takes a shot that you deem as being good, that's good. It doesn't matter if it goes in. And that's the same for you guys as players. If you take the right shot, that's all that we can ask. Now, we can ask that you go in and practice and things like that as well so that you're good at hitting shots. But in the moment, you have to take the right shot. It doesn't go in sometimes. It's not that easy, you know, to make shots. So that's really, really critical. And so one we talk about a little bit is that we want praise on the raise. So if someone shoots and, and it's a good shot, they should be hearing that feedback as they're raising up for the shot. So as this is happening, good shot, right? If you can praise them before, ideally at the latest while the ball's in flight, then there's no doubt in their mind that your praise is process oriented. You're praising the decision to shoot. If you leave it and then see if the ball goes in, even though you may genuinely have thought that was a good shot decision, they now have questions. Like, are they saying that they thought that was a good shot because I made it? But if you say it before the results even happened, then there's no doubt that you're being genuine in your praise. You're praising the shot decision. And that's huge for the players to having confidence and shooting the ball well.